Well, good day, everybody. Kenny Jang here. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode here of the show. Uh, we've got uh, a special guest with us here today. I've been telling him that the last couple of months, his name has been popping up and reputation preceding you. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself to our audience here today and tell us a little bit about what you are doing. Kenny, you are too kind. Hey, um, it's so good to be uh, talking with you today. Uh, really, it is. I am one of the co-founders of a company called Lightstock, and uh, there we provide, we try to provide uh, faith-based, cheesy free content for churches, nonprofits. Uh, it's a start, It's a company we started about four or five years ago, uh, having a ball with it, um, and starting a new company actually uh, just this year called Dwell, which is a scripture listening app, uh, which my brother and I are really excited about. So oh, nice. lots of fun things happening. Nice. So Joshua, well, let's talk about your first company. Um, what was the genesis of that for real? And um, how many churches are you serving right now? Or how many people are you serving with that resource? Because it, it definitely is sorely needed in our space. Yeah. Well, the first company I actually started was Raceway Media. I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with that company, but my brother and I, we started that company back in 2006. And so um, we're pastor's kids. So we kind of know the plight of senior pastors. So um, we started creating graphics for my dad back in college. And we decided, hey, you know, instead of using a blue background and yellow text, dad, let us help you out and do something that looks a little bit more professional, creative. And so we started putting these graphics online and lo and behold, pastors loved it. Right. And so um, it really just kind of took off in, uh, in a way that was just kind of godlike. It was just, we were blessed. And so we just kind of fell into entrepreneurship and we were able to uh, grow that company. We were serving about 4,500 churches when we sold to uh, Rob Thomas of Igniter. Yep. And, and we knew uh, from doing Graceway that we really wanted to start uh, a stock photography company that addressed that stigma uh, in church media, which is just, it just there wasn't a lot of quality out there. I mean, we were searching, trying to find content to use in our presentations and graphics, just hard to find. Yeah. And so we wanted to end that stigma. And uh, so I think we're making a dent with Lightstock and um, we love it. Gotcha. And share with us the business model for Lightstock in particular. Yeah, so we have a subscription model uh, where you can come and you can sign up, you know, if you want to spend 10 bucks a month all the way up to 200 bucks a month or something like that. And you can uh, access content. We've got stock photography, vectors, uh, even video clips. Uh, and then we do have a little pay as you go option where if you're not into a subscription, you don't like commitments which I totally get. Yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> I think people just are trying to evolve out of clip art and other yeah. um, low-level resources. Recently, I pulled together on my blog um, a list of all the freebie sites out there. there was a, we stopped at like 134 wow. free, royalty-free sites out there. But even the quality there, there's only – you know, it's 90-10 rule where yeah. there's only a few that are decent. And then the problem is everyone uses them, right? Un everyone yeah. knows Unsplash. Right. And how many times can you use the same photos over and over again? And so yeah. I think resources like Lightsock is just fantastic because you're able to find quality images that are mm -hmm. relevant to church life, faith life, etc. And we're really trying to create, uh, Kitty, an ecosystem where we find these faith based photographers, designers, creatives, and we, we connect customers and these creatives together yeah. where you're creating this virtuous cycle. Creatives, Christian creatives are getting paid to do this beautiful work. And it's, yeah. and that's, that's one of the goals for us is to just, how do we make something sustainable too, where this whole community and can just thrive and flourish. So, yeah. so far so good. We've got about, you know, got over 10,000 customers and a thousand contributors. And so, um, God has blessed us for sure. Now, February 1st, we're both going to be with Propel 2017. They are focusing on churches that are 300 or less, which I love. My heart is for that solo pastor ministry or the small team that's really trying to break yep. out of that 100 barrier, 200 barrier, 300 barrier. Sure. Um, what is the category of talk that you are going to be teaching on? So, so I'm on the board uh, of Justin's company, and so he asked me a few months ago if I wanted to speak in the area of personal vitality, which is something I'm really passionate about. Uh, all things growth, 
I am actually speaking on the importance of establishing a morning routine. And wow. that sounds really blah, <laughs> but man, I think it's one of the most important things leaders can do is to solidify uh, a morning routine in their life that's filled with growth-oriented things, uh, whether that's seeking first the kingdom, reading good growth-oriented books, writing, um, practicing self-awareness, all this stuff. There's a number of growth-oriented things that we need to be doing every day. And so that's what I'm challenging uh, church leaders uh, with at Propel. Yeah, I love, you know, systemization, processes, workflows. That's all great stuff. We all know that when you apply them to the enterprise or the mission, the organization, it works. And yet so yeah. many times we forget about it for ourselves. Um, yeah. And uh, that, it, I was excited when I heard that you're going to be talking about that, setting us up for success. Um, even personally, I'm becoming much more self-aware of even energy levels throughout the day and my sure. peak productivity zones. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's a great topic that you're talking about. Yeah, and you're right on the peak productivity zones because hierarchy is such a big thing. We have, you know, the most energy in the morning. And so the first thing I want to do in the morning is seek the kingdom. And I want to give my best to God first. And so I kind of talk a little bit about that in the talk and, um, and, and everything, the most important work I'm doing in the morning during my growth time. And, uh, and it just kind of flows from there. And, um, and so, yeah, you're totally right. So are you one of those proponents of like extra early morning? I, you know, the more leaders I read yeah, and, and dig into when they're transparent about their routines, you're talk, you hear these leaders that are getting up at three o'clock, four o'clock, five, definitely before the, the rooster crows. Um, is yeah. that part of the routine that you're advocating? I, I do. I actually wake up between five and five 30, uh, on the weekdays. And now I chill out and relax on the weekends. Cause I think there's a, a good rhythm, uh, that you get into. I don't think it has to be all day, every day. Uh, but yeah, I'm an advocate of early rising for sure. Um, I think there's, there's, uh, there's magic that happens in those early morning hours. And so I'm a, I'm an advocate. And so what, what time do you hit the pillow at night? So I'm usually uh, in the bed by 930 and then asleep by about 10. So gotcha. that's and then what the about this? This is the other thing in our American culture that uh, I, I wish uh, because more popular is the the Holy Grail is uh, the afternoon nap. Yeah, man, I got to get I got to get on get in on that. Uh, I have not uh, taken advantage of that. I should. I can my own boss for goodness sakes but uh yeah we uh we take a in the afternoons we take a little a 15 minute walk at the office all of our team gets up and we walk we've got you know the power snacks and all that stuff so we're we're, we're trying to implement some of those things yeah and one of um my colleagues uh i found out what he used to do actually is um, go into the car in the parking lot and take a 15 minute power nap, which I yeah. never thought about because you always use the excuse you can't take a nap in the office. But um, yeah. it's something that I, 2017 might be the year of the power yeah. nap in the car. Yeah. Hey, that's that's not a bad idea. That's pretty smart. Yeah. What's in the future for you? You've mentioned another company, another enterprise that you're trying to get up and running. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, for John and I, um, and we're co-founders in everything we do, we're just, there's not a great way to listen to scripture on your phone. Now, when I tell people that, they're like, well, there's this, there's this app, there's this app, there's that. But really, the kind of experience that I'm looking for is um, an incredibly easy, intuitive experience that creates a jumping off point for people uh, to dig into the, uh, the word. Um, the company we just started is called Dwell, and it's from uh, Colossians. Let the words of Christ richly dwell within you. And so it's not a memorization app. Uh, it's, it's all about listening. It's all about taking it in. It's all about letting yourself be washed by the word. And so we're, uh, we're right in the early goings of creating that. We're going to uh, be uh, launching a Kickstarter in the next few months. Um, we're going to have music, background music uh, behind it. So we're working with some artists there. And we're going to have multiple voices, multiple translations. It's going to be really uh, cool. I'm very excited about it. Uh, Is so it going to be uh, dramatized like the new Experience Bible? It's not going to be. We're going to have one voice out of the four that is going to have a, a dramatized feel. Um, but we want to we want to have different different ways to experience it. So we're going to two females, two males, 
and just different different voices, different approaches. So, uh, I'm excited about that. Yeah, audio Bibles have been near and dear to me. One of the uh, groups and uh, people I've worked with is Fellowship of the Performing Arts, Max McLean, who yeah. kind of pioneered the audio Bible, right, with Zondervan right. back in the day and being yeah. still used everywhere. And I, especially with new believers, uh, I'm a big proponent of getting into the audio because it really brings the word to life for many people in ways yeah. that the text doesn't. Yeah, it's, you know, it's so easy to listen to great music on your phone, so easy to listen to a book through Audible, podcasts, but I find that there's not a super easy way to just access scripture when I go for a run or when I'm commuting. Just an easy way, like just a, here's a listening plan. Here's a, here's one of the stories of the Bible. It's, and you just get right into it. Uh, so hopefully that'll, that'll turn out good. Nice. Uh, Kickstarter is going to hit when? When is it going to go public? You know, we're hoping for uh, the end of March, early April. So we'll, we shall see. We'll keep you posted on that. Nice. Um, so yeah. if people wanted to get in touch with you directly about this project or the other ones, what's the best way for people to do that? Is it social media, email, give me some, drop some URLs. What's the best way? Well, uh, Twitter's always good. It's just uh, Josh David Bailey. Josh yeah. David Bailey. Yeah. And then I'm actually launching a, a personal blog uh, in just about a week or so. It's, and it's, it's grow daily, G R O D A I dot L Y. And so that's where a lot of my personal writing is just going to live. And then, of course, light stocks out there. And uh, yeah, so those are some some great places to, to catch up with me. Nice. Um, looking forward to your Propel talk. Um, I'm assuming you'll be on social with a hashtag Propel17 with the conversations throughout the day. That's right. That's right. Looking forward to it. Um, and thank you so much for spending some time today. I know your busy schedule um, and really appreciate it. But I'm excited that we're going to be teaching together um, and looking forward to engaging with more of the people here online. Thank yeah. you so much for everything that you're doing for the kingdom. Yeah, thank you, Kenny. We appreciate it. Looking forward to it.